Check this out. Hey, it's Jonathan Royle, um, also known by birth as Alex William Smith here of CircusOfTheMind.net. I'm one of the victims of the fake Sheikh Mazza Mahmood. I tried to expose him in 1998. Unfortunately, it backfired because I didn't know that he was always 10, 20, maybe as much as 100 steps ahead of me. Because he was using techniques that I only found out about in the past couple of years when evidence came to light that he hacked my phone and used unlawful information gathering, and drugged me and various other things. Anyway... All the talk at the minute is about Mr Bates versus the post office and so it should be. This is the biggest miscarriage of justice in British history and I noticed that today and yesterday a couple of British MPs are calling for all the convictions to be overturned en masse and I agree, agree, agree that should happen but I also think that people should take a closer look at Rupert Murdoch's disgraced fake shake, Maza Mahmood and the gross miscarriages of justice that have happened there since 1994. Um, anyway, have a look at this video. Conservative MP David Davis tells Radio 4 today the best way to handle the post office horizon scandal is an appeal that resolves everybody. In other words, overturn all of the cases because they depend on one single lie said, I see no real reason why you can't have a mass case on that basis. All of the cases depend on one single lie, and that is that nobody but the postmasters and postmistresses could access their computers. We now know that to be untrue. I see no real reason, no logical reason, why you can't have a mass case, a mass appeal. Uh, on that single basis, or, or indeed a, a one-line bill in Parliament that just says everyone's exonerated. Interesting. I mean, the person who first raised this with me, um, who was a, a postmistress herself, uh, doesn't like the idea, for example, of a pardon. Doesn't like the idea of it not being done through the courts because that leaves it uncertain that they're innocent. You know, that, that, that's the that's the sort of point. It's the proof of innocence, if you like, in as much as you know, I have proof of innocence. It's proof of innocence that's that's needed. Now, sure, it may be a one-line bill, it, it could be a royal pardon, but actually the best way to do it is just a, a, an appeal that resolves everybody. Also, Lord Falconer, former Lord Chancellor, has told BBC Five Live, there would be no resistance in Parliament um, to basically quashing the remaining 800 post office convictions. It could be done tomorrow. In other words, there are options available. I personally could not agree more. Just to overturn all of the horizon miscarriages of justice. Even if there's any element of doubt about any of them as to whether it's down to the system or not, the simple fact is just to overturn them all. Even if one or two people had genuinely, and I don't reckon they had, but even if one or two people had been fiddling, It'd be far easier and far better for everyone concerned, including the people who covered this up for so long, to just overturn everybody's conviction en masse, as um, is now being called for by many people. And in the same light, I would suggest the same should really be done to any convictions given to any victims of Rupert Murdoch's now disgraced fake shake, Mazza Mahmood, that were given after 1994. And the reason for that is, as illustrated at circusofthemind.net, the police and the Crown Prosecution Service both communicated with each other in 1994 after a trial collapsed because they could no longer rely on Mazza Mahmood's evidence. And they categorically stated to each other that his evidence could not and should not ever be relied upon again to bring any further cases to court. And yet, for some bizarre reason, uh, cases carried on going to court until 2014. That's 20 years later, 2014, yeah, when the Talisa Contos Tavlos trial collapsed, which ultimately led to Mahmood being jailed for conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. And we now know for a fact that he lied in that case. We also know for a fact, as illustrated at circusofthemind.net, that there is evidence out there that he hacked people's phones and used various unlawful information gathering techniques and um, illegal private investigators. There is strong evidence to suggest 
that he drugged people. In fact, I have a statement on circusofthemind.net from one of the people who used to work with him saying they witnessed such occur to make people more easily manipulable and manipulated and coerced and entrapped into doing things they would never normally dream of. And there is evidence to show, including the 1999 collapsed Rodri Giggs case, which collapsed because um, they were able to show that the evidence had been manipulated and tampered with and therefore the case collapsed and they couldn't rely on Mahmood's evidence anymore. Why was that never disclosed to any Mahmood victims after 1999? Why was it never disclosed to any Maza Mahmood victims after 1994 and the existing communications between the Metropolitan Police and the Crown Prosecution Service stating that Mahmood's evidence could not and should not ever be trusted again as a witness of truth? Why was this covered up? Why to this day has that never been disclosed to any Maza Mahmood victims? Very odd indeed. There is no question whatsoever that Mahmood committed perjury in the Leveson inquiry, um, claiming to have numerous convictions that um, Press Gang and Paddy French and all the details are on Circus of the Mind.net, links are there. He most definitely didn't have. So there is evidence galore that he's a continual habitual liar, has uh, perjured himself in the past, definitely was guilty of conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. In fact, he served prison time for that. And that he fabricated fake evidence, lied about people, and that ultimately none of the convictions obtained against victims of Maza Mahmood, the fake shake, are in any way safe. Despite that, and despite knowing that stuff and knowing that they knew back in 1994 that Mahmood's evidence could not and should not be relied upon in any manner, still the Crown Prosecution Service um, contested and argued that my conviction was safe when um, I applied to the CCRC and ultimately sadly because I wasn't given an extension of time so I wasn't able to present my evidence to the court properly despite the fact I've got tons of evidence to prove everything I've mentioned and it's all at circusofthemind.net as have many other Mahmood victims there are numerous miscarriages of justice since 1994 cases that should never have been brought to court because they already knew the police and crown prosecution service that Mahmood could not and should not be relied upon as a witness of truth. Plus, of course, we now have the evidence that shows that he drugged people, hacked phones, used unlawful information gathering, lied about people, fabricated evidence, manipulated, spliced evidence, and um, routinely lied, including committing perjury in the Leveson inquiry and whatnot. Basically, I would also call for all fake shape Mazam Mahmood convictions to be overturned. And some people actually suggested um, that there should be a, an investigation into Mahmood and his activities at the time of the collapse of the Talisa trial. Sadly, that never occurred or never occurred at any real high level like it should have done. However, the Leveson Inquiry Part 2 would have dealt with looking at corruption with the police and the media and if Sir Brian Leveson's uh, recommendations were followed, would have looked at the illegal and dishonest activities of Maza Mahmood in particular and put a spotlight on them that would have brought to light even more evidence to help myself and people like um, John Alford, Herbie Hydes and various other victims of Mahmood's techniques and dishonesty to get their unsafe convictions overturned. So we need Leveson Inquiry Part 2 more than ever and yeah, all the a horizon related post office scandal conviction should be on the, overturned en masse um, but please don't leave it until such times as finally somebody makes a television drama about uh, the fake shape Mazza Mahmood and his illegal activities uh, for action to actually be taken to help the victims of these miscarriages of justice that are explained at circusofthemind.net to also get the justice that we all deserve.